Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Saturday, July 23rd, 2022 to order. Time is now 9.02 a.m. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, for anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board, please do so by coming up to the microphone, clearly stating your name and address, and signing in on the public comments sheet. Uh, at this time, I'll open the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue, there is no one on the Zoom. Okay. Seeing no public comments, we'll move into the main items for discussion. The first is the Act 537. Uh, our SEO is actively doing inspections in the Northwest District. Uh, we did receive a letter from Tim Wagner at DEP requesting an update on the status of our Act 537 plan implementations. Andy will review the reply letter that I'm um, putting together, indicating that we have a, an updated cost estimate of more than double what the original plan was and that we are working with a firm that does grant sourcing and feasibility assessment. Uh, we received a letter from uh, our friends at Hydroterra Professionals. Um, since the project's uh, costs, funding sources, and their requirements have changed since the original plan was prepared, they're suggesting that we update Section 7 of the Act 537 plan, which discusses the Community Development Block Grant, Public Bond, Penvest, and Rural Utility Service, and USDA program. Um, so they actually are here this morning with us. Thank you for, for coming out. Yes, thank you very much. Um, at this point, I, I think I'll turn the floor over to you. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, my name is Joe Boltez. Uh, if we met, or so we've spoken on the phone. Uh, I am the proud of Hydro Care Professionals. Uh, I've been involved in water and wastewater for about 30 years now. Uh, to my left is Ms. Kimberly DeRosa. Kim lives in the uh, township next door. And uh, to her left, is uh, Chris Hopper and Michael uh, Wolf of uh, Stifle uh, Financing. And uh, we've all kind of perused the Act 537 plan. Um, noticed some areas were a little bit more dated than others. Uh, spoke with your chairman about the costs that were presented in the Act 537 plan. And as he mentioned, the costs definitely have uh, doubled. So we're trying to understand, you know, where the township is with the Act 537 plan right now. And um, I noticed that, you know, this has been uh, a living document for the last 20 years, it seems like. There's been a number of supervisors that have uh, played a part in putting the 537 plan together. Um, it seems like the three of you all are, I don't want to say new supervisors, I don't mean it that yeah. way, but... Yes, we are. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, so, understanding that you all probably didn't have a lot of input, and this was just an assumption into the Act 537 plan, um, you know, we really are just here to try and gain some information from you all to see what direction we really want to see this thing head. Uh, I read through I want to say the entire 537 plan, but there were 500 pages and, you know, forgive me if I missed anything. It's, but, it's uh, not exactly light reading. So. No, it's definitely not. Um, we did kind of focus on section seven of the 537 plan. It talks about financing and moving forward. And uh, my discussions with your chairman kind of led me into uh, maybe we ought to do something a little bit more than, than uh, just an analysis of the area and what the income is, but maybe we ought to really take a look at uh, what kind of financing might be out there right now. I see that you all have uh, the ARPA, ARPA um, plan up there on your agenda. It's been our experience uh, that there is more grant funding out there available than any other time before, at least in the last 30 years. Uh, there for a while there was that almost no grants that were available for sewer infrastructure or water infrastructure. But now with the American Rescue Plan Act, um, there is quite a bit of money available uh, for improvements of the sanitary sewer systems or new sanitary sewer systems. Um, 
anyway, we're here for you know kind of a fact finding thing. Uh, there's a lot of questions that I had when I was reading through the 537 plan, but because it's your plan, you know, the three of you representing uh, Marion Township, this is your plan. I know that there is an approval letter from DEP. I want to I want to make sure I want to be clear on where you all want to see this thing go. Okay. So, yes. will the DEP allow us to update a section? I think so, as long as it's non-substantive. Like, it, right. if it's not changing the the, the actual physical plan, yeah. it just has to do with financing yeah. and stuff like that. That was one of my concerns. We absolutely have to move forward. We, you know, our, our hands are tied behind our back. We don't have a choice, and and it's more like this was kind of left to us rather than uh, it wasn't by our choice. This is because people didn't act on it previously. So. And so we have to move forward, otherwise DEP is going to fine us. So we we want to do what we need to do, and I think that's pretty much where we're at at this point. So the the side note on that, and then you yeah. and I had talked about that a little bit because of the astronomical price tag and the low number of EDUs that it actually affects. Um, it's good that there's a lot of financing around there, but we, one of the other aspects of this is if for some reason, and I know it's a massive uphill battle to do this, if we had to challenge the DEP on the basis of cost feasibility, that would be $90,000 a household over 20 years, that it's some astronomical oh figure like that, that yeah. we would have well-documented empirical facts driven data to say, look, we, we want to do this. We want to comply. We can't, this will, right. this will create a ghost town. We want to work with you, but until something else changes, it's not, it's not tenable. Right. Um, so that's, it's kind of a, yeah. a twofold thing. We have to move forward because of the nature of how the plan went in. And if we have to do it, we want to make sure it's as affordable as possible for everybody that is yeah. going to touch. I mean, our township functions off of a $600,000 a year budget. That's it. You could tell by the condition of our building. And uh, as far as ARP funds, we did receive $100,000 in ARP funds. And we're expecting another 100000 I think, this month sometime. In this yeah, summer. That's, okay. that's a drop in the bucket. Right, right. Million. And so, so right, exactly. And that, that's my point. So what we've currently received, I don't know if there's any other funding out there that's available, um, but we need we need help. And we, we you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that money we receive, I believe, is everyone. Right, right. Almost without asking. Yes, yes. Yes, pie yes. Based on population. Yes, or exactly. Like Came too slow. So yep. All my clients have got the same amount extra lives. Yes. Yes. Lives very yes. Correct. But now I think it becomes the custom tailored directed approach for the whole money yeah. has not been out. Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. Whatever we can do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lives, yeah. So. I mean, whatever we need to move forward and move forward as rapidly as possible because. I, I believe DEP is breathing down our necks. Yeah. We're really under the microscope with them. So, the ARPA money that you received uh, has that been allocated? Any specific no, 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 no. We've no. left it unallocated because we want to be able to use it um, for whether we have a, a culvert emergency or we decide to do something with the building or we have to do something Act Five Thirty Seven yeah. related. Uh, we've we've left it liquid essentially so that we could use it for something. Yeah, and I think initially with all the guidelines that were unclear until the final ruling came in, it was one of those we're not going to touch this until we know what we can use it for. So we have a we have a lot of things to fix. I think this is probably top priority to get this over and done with. And uh, other than that, I mean, so we're just leaving those funds there until we know if and when. If we don't have to touch them for this kind of a project, I would be more than pleased mm -hmm. because we've kind of discussed what we'd like to do with it. But at the same time, we've held back on on allocating those funds for anything. To put it bluntly, likes and needs are two yeah. different things. Yeah. So if we need to yeah. use it for something like this, then we Yeah, so this is to. top priority for us at this point. Yeah. Uh, and Act 537 plans, I've done a number of them. I've done plans in, in Norristown, numerous other areas where it might be a village system. Yeah. It's not uh, unheard of to see a plan drag out for 20 years. It really isn't. A lot of times it'll go 10 years, and they, that would be a quick turnaround, quite honestly. Because there's so much public pushback or you know, developments coming or changing. And so, you know, the plan is that's really what it is. It's a plan for the future. And a lot of times it kind of morphs and moves along. Um, 
recently there's been some extension of, of public water in the area. I understand that a neighboring township just got a Arthur Grant uh, as it was already. Yes, um, so Berks County has begun dispersing the first round of ARPA recipients. They're not seeing who they're going to be recommending for awards. Um, Wilmel Storm and Robosonia, their joint authority, may now with a significant grant. And also, um, Robosonia in particular, I believe, will be extending um, one of their, I think it was before Spain. Um, basically, they got put together for thinking about just in this geographic area, $1.5 million promised in federal money from wow. Berks County. That's impressive. And, uh, I've been in contact with the Berks County ARPA office. And uh, they have not begun planning next year's rent cycle, but she is almost certain, 99.9% certain, there is going to be a rent cycle for us. Okay. There's going to be around $12 million available um, for applications in the upcoming 2023 cycle. So they still have a while yet to go to finish granting for 2022. There's about $18 million available in Berks County that people will put in applications for. Excited because there's still a portion left, yeah. and all of those projects that actually went to the water exploration. Uh, yeah, I, I, at the very least, if you could leave us with all your contact information, so that I could reach out. I mean, I think unfortunately financing is probably the way we're going to have to look at at some point, because we know grants can only take us so far with this large of a ticket. So oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, Unless there's weird superseding things that like with some grants where you can take one funding source but not another, I think yeah. the only way we're going to make enough of a dent in that to make it even remotely feasible is yeah. if we have a combination of things like oh take yeah, the ARP, um, uh, I don't yeah. Okay. yeah, no, no, please. I'm here. I'm to the to the Yeah. 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 So what's our next what's our next step? They are not They know that there's nothing really they can do to you. Right. You know that. So they're going to structure such that it will be a yeah. 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 It just extend the loan, like okay. we'll be here. Don't worry, you know. Yeah. They tack it on the end or whatever. They don't evict. They're not like the bank. Right, they're, right. There's nothing they, they know they're to. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. And, and I feel like they've seen uh, some really dire situations. I know one of the things, not to cut you off, and I think, Jim, you were trying to say something, too, there. Well, I just um, wondered what our next step is. Well, the, Do we need to hire a grant writer? Can Will you assist with that? I mean, what is our next step? Well, we have experience writing grants that uh, actually, months ago, Kimberly and the rest of the uh, Hydro Care Office prepared a few other grants 
uh, in Chester County residents uh, in the city of Cleveland to, I think, in the about eight hundred thousand dollars. We've been to the great the our grant writing uh, program. As Michael was mentioning, the RUS uh, financing avenue, that's one direction you could have head. I understand that uh, the American Rescue Plan Act is much broader than you know, just cutting off some money or carving out some money from particular townships. They have the ARPA grant that the county had it is uh, county is helping yeah awarding uh, townships with, and then there's the H two O portion of that that comes through the CFA Commonwealth Financing Authority. Uh, to me, it looks like you really want to try and chase all those finances yes. if yeah. possible. Yes, because as your chairman suggested, you know even a million dollars doesn't make that much of a dent in no. the That kind of takes me back a step. So, after reading through your 537 plan, I noticed that the engineer that wrote the plan suggested uh, that low pressure systems have a very short life. That is not my experience. When you've done low pressure sewer systems in, in towns such as this, and there are, there, there is, Small pumps out there now that were released over the last 10 years. There weren't even 10 years. Uh, these, some of these pumps will go 20 years before they can be replaced. And so you're going from an eight inch public sewer line that needs to flow by gravity. So you, know, you have to keep it on a constant grade to you get to the total hopping grade. Or you put in an inch and a half or two inch and a half. And you force it down the road. So you can turn without any manholes, you can go up and down grades without, uh, you know, really deep cuts in the road. But that would have been a tough 537. We would need to do a special study to kind of re investigate that. So I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but. Um, this might be the, the fact that it's increased more than 100% would be the perfect catalyst if we got an engineering company to look at this and say, hey, uh, rather than the gravity system like, like Joe is referring to, we use a, a low pressure and it's going to be $6 million instead. It's going to be much more achievable. They, we might find traction with the DEP based on that, that we're you know, at least going through the good faith effort if we want to try to make this work. Okay. So um, do you... Does that, does that open us back up to public comments, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that would that would open that back up to public comments. And okay. this is something that we would have to work very closely with the DEP about to make sure that they don't uh, get off on the wrong foot. So um, could, you, could you include that in the letter then? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll be happy to include that in the okay. letter. Um, is that something Kraft, like does Kraft have sewage? Well, we'd have to look. I'm not sure you know the answer, but... Um, if the company that we're using for an engineer right now does not have the capability to do that, do you have recommendations for? Oh, yeah, we, okay. We do that. Okay. So oh, that, 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 that might be. Yeah. 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 Up the past, it's okay. Uh, reading through yeah. all the comments, there were so many comments uh, from your neighbors and residents in, in the village here um, that they were understanding that the ag industry is potentially bound for the water system. And I, I don't want to debate right. that. Right. You know, I have my feelings from you know a scientific standpoint, but. It might be your of the township to consider public water instead of public sewer. Well, I mean, well, we're required to do the, the public sewer. Like there's there's no escaping that even if we were to put in public water. Um, you're required by, yes. by the see? by the DEP that they will not is that a process through the 537 plan? More or less, yeah. That they they 
I don't know if it was officially on the record, but they had mentioned that they will not approve any plan other than one that calls for public sewer because of the nature of uh, largely on Main Street, the property sizes. Most of them are, are under a half acre and by current definition can't support on lot systems. Yeah. The only thing that they'd be able to have there is a holding tank. So whenever systems on that stretch of property start to fail, they don't have any alternatives. And that's kind of the, the, the route that the DEP took is like, look, even under best technical guidance, it's, it's probably not going to be that great. And you're going to have to start putting holding tanks in. Yeah. And my understanding of the court case was that, um, you can acknowledge that human waste is a minimal contribution to any kind of contamination for our current groundwater. Um, and DEP came back and said, we don't care. You have to put in a sewer. Well, I think their, their exact yeah. words was they cited something from, might've been the clean streams. I, I can't remember where it's any, any source of contamination. Right. They don't care how big or small, right. any source of contamination can be something right. they zero in on. And so I, I, where the, I, were there uh, samples taken? You could find like a like less than a hundred point zero zero one percent contamination from human waste in our current water. Most of it is from agricultural, and the DEP was like, "That's okay. It, that's irrelevant. Yeah. We want you to put in a sewer, and that's that." I mean, that's that's, that's the, basically what it that's the bulk of what the court case came down to. So, yeah, yeah that was district court. Uh, that was. Yeah, I think that was district. And then we did the um, environmental hearing board. Yep. And um, I think that so cost us about $30,000. It, it was probably yeah. actually more than that. More than that, but, yeah. Um, well, we had, we had the insurance. But yeah. um, the actual content of the court case was the residents, uh, myself included, challenged um, the due process on the execution of that. And ultimately, that was upheld by the court where they didn't observe the right steps going through it. Um, through the course of that, though, we did find a lot of stuff out from the DEP directly about, like, you know, it's it doesn't matter how much it is. If it's contamination, we're allowed to, to, to try to address it or force people to address it, um, along with a, a whole bunch of other things. But uh, that was really the whole principle of it was yep. we challenged uh, execution and process on it and it was upheld and then... We got to talk to the DEP several times in and out of court about yeah. things. Very expensive conversation. Yeah. So there was a ruling by the environment board then. No, it was that was district court that upheld the uh, the challenge. But yeah. uh, we we still, as part of what you're supposed to do when you challenge us, we took it to the environmental hearing board. And there are there are other cases that basically say the, the environmental hearing board is the only one that gets to um, have the final say on what their administrative rules say anyway. So it doesn't, it's one of those, it, it doesn't matter. They're gonna tell us what all those administrative laws mean, no matter what, they are the end all be all, so. Yeah, once it gets yeah. to the EHB, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been my experience that public water does address 527 issues. But again, if it was a hearing, it kind of let it come away from public water. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it led us away from public water so much as public water wasn't even part of the discussion since um, it wasn't really the, the issue at hand and DEP by their own statement basically said like, if you want to put public water in, that's fine. But in terms of what the Act 537 is concerned about, we're concerned about contamination from waste. So. It's not that we don't know that we need this. We have uncovered people pumping their sewage into the old hole that was there for an outhouse. And that's why a lot of these, these storage tanks are now becoming an issue for us because it's going to cost these people too much money to put in a proper septic system. And I should back yeah. up. This yeah. is maybe one of the downfalls of the low pressure system requires storage of the storage property So I guess we need to go that yeah, route. I, I, we need to. I'm kind of of that opinion. I'd yeah. also like, while we're at it, 
even though it's a pressure system, it's never made sense to me. And I'll go out and say it, you can disagree or agree. Yeah. Um, the West End, like Bob Nelson, mm -hmm. Marianne Beamister for the one or two other houses that are yeah. there that are on the other side of the hill. Mm -hmm. I know they were a late stage addition in the plan. It has never made sense to me because all of those properties are like well over an acre in size. Yep. Yep. That's what I mean. Like if we're, if we're doing this, I think we should probably use that opportunity to just say like, yep. you know, like yep. Yep. Exclude them. I, uh, Jim, what are your feelings on that? I think we should have them look at it, especially because of the excessive price tag of the, the system that's in the plan. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, please, please, please. please. Uh, Where are so the ears? The other thing that low pressure, the other difference that low pressure uh, brings to the table that gravity absolutely does not, it's the ability to expand the system. But as I mentioned, you want to put a small diameter pipe down on Main Street. That two inch pipe, three inch pipe can only give so much capacity. Factor that into the design mm -hmm. right away. Put an eight inch gravity sewer at minimum grade, it can, it can handle 600,000 gallons. I know there was opposition about once you build it, they will come on there. So people were like, put this gravity sewer in, it's just going to stimulate development on yeah. the other side. Which could be the case, right? So if you have an no, eight inch line all the way yeah. down to Nelson, yeah. and that arm just on the other side of town comes up and they decide to develop it, they could potentially connect in, which would be good in some yeah. aspects because it would help pay the yeah. financing on the system. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you have a low pressure system in there, you can design that so there's very little room for future connections, which kind of but zoning we yeah, have a lot of the, restrictions yeah the way our zoning is is unless you're going to change the use of something on main street that's zoned like a, a town center like community core kind of thing or put something along the highway there um there really isn't a lot of opportunity for expansion because most things are, are zoned either uh, low density residential or ag preserve and i think like 65 or 70 percent or, yeah. Um, there's at least two different things to, it's been years since I had no difference, but it's one of them. The penalty for breaking the covenant is to pay back taxes. For like seven years or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, but being developed with reasonable density, developers aren't too glad to pay the seven years. Yeah. yeah. And it's not a permanent prohibition. Yeah. Yeah. So, ag security, if it's conserved with easements, they aren't. Yeah. That's different yeah. Yeah. than Act 442 or whatever the, the first one was. Uh, the real reported easement. Uh, held by some trust, then that's supposed to be in perpetuity. Yeah. That's, that's the good kind of answer. Yeah. My, my understanding is of the entire township, about 65 or 70 percent are the ones that are conserved by the easement. Um, do you think we should uh, try and nail that down um, in terms of having uh, some ammunition in our back pocket? comes up about yeah well you shouldn't build grab grinder pumps because you're you're gonna get screwed because of all this development that come along it takes one farm blah, blah, blah. but it would be nice if you knew that it was uh the other thing is people are a little bit sloppy when they talk about how their farms are concerned you know let's let's drill down if we can find it what it is um a conservation easement Recorded on the deed and uh, filed in the courthouse and held by a real trust. So, what are the items that the agenda has to do with it? Question. Question. And I did research on the first time the website to okay. find out if there are other forms, is it that secured? And that's where I found this um, thing on this. I mean, we have, we have here a resolution. 
And I know the one kind of actual calculus, but there, there's a bunch of properties that are in this resolution that have it for. So I'm, I'm like, I do not just consider the characters, which is yeah. most of them. We'll we'll double we'll double check and see if we can't yeah. get a like a com comprehensive list together. Yeah, we'll have to, have mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, Sue's got too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the pictures worth a thousand words ideology. So if we can get like a list of them and put them on a map and say like, look, all the ones that we've blacked out are the ones that have easements on them. The, are they the ones that are hash marked? Yeah. Okay. Do we know? Yeah, but of of those, do we know that all of those are easement? I'm, I'm fairly okay. Sure. Okay. So I had the experience. Yeah. Uh, having my person change, someone retires, uh, you can have the best understanding. Everybody's on board. The guy you're working with. Him. One day it's not there. Yep. Somebody you never know, saw it. It's just good to have. Having you know, a black and white. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, that's. I'm sending some of the wrong yeah. email. <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll never get opposition from yeah. us about documentation. That was one of the biggest hurdles yeah. that the three of us have had to overcome, is there was very little documented, whether it's yeah. office processes, road things, you yeah. name it. A lot of it was tribal knowledge that whoever was in just they did it and they maybe told somebody how to do it or showed somebody how to do it and that's how it yeah. perpetuated. Yeah. We're not doing it like yeah, that we're anymore. not we're not doing that anymore. And the, the plan uh okay. suggested uh there could be a creation of authority. Has that been a discussion with Um we've talked very briefly about um having our own authority and we pretty much dismissed that for, for cost reasons. So it would have been just cooperative uh, cooperation with Womelsdorf and their sewer authority. Um, simply because uh, as Irene said, we have a budget of $600,000 to, to stand up an authority would be extremely uh, cost intensive. That's what we thought, but yeah. Uh, no, you guys are right in the same line of thinking as us that unless it really made sense to do it and we could afford to do it if it doesn't pass that litmus test we simply can't do it going back Uh, yeah, yeah they, the, they they definitely have the capacity because that was one of the questions that I 
proposed last year with the construction of like the John F. Martin plant up the road was if people are snapping up EDUs from Wormelsdorf, are we maybe laboring on a plan that isn't going to have capacity when we connect that they originally had 300 and we need 165 by the time we get there they go oh, it's too bad we have 80. so that that we know they have assured us that they do have the yeah. capacity to handle it um, but i think the last time we had a discussion around the agreement itself well, was maybe 2014 2015 something like that yeah. unless andy unless andy talked to them after that so again another part of the letter yeah these are the items that need to be updated. All right, so we need the plan essentially reviewed and alternate proposals that needs to be okayed by DEP. Yeah, and I, I think it would be better to look at the design too, like they yep. were saying. And that's, I know even going back many, many years now with CAGE, that was one of the things that a lot of people in the town questioned is why are we doing gravity sewer versus something else. Um, mm -hmm. I know Bob Nelson personally lobbied that a couple of times. It's like, why aren't we doing pump system? They're generally a lot cheaper to install. There's a little more operation and maintenance that goes along with them, but um, pumps are a lot better now than they were in the sixties or seventies or even the eighties. Mm -hmm. So um, oh, yeah. I would yeah. Do so much yeah, so I would say if we're gonna break it into bullet point items, the action plan would be um, have our friends at, uh, I always, uh, as I say, I, I always, I always mix up the two. So <laughs> I always, I apologize. I always flip them back. Hydro Terra professionals. It's our Terra Hydra. Um, have them look at the plan mm -hmm. and, uh, work on that, uh, I'll, I'll air quotes, redesign of the sewer with the proposed of the, the low pressure, uh, along with the updated, costs. the updated costs around that so that we can do a compare and contrast between the gravity versus the low pressure and the financing sources in terms of the mix of ARP, RUS, um, anyone that will give H2O, us money, any, literally any, any <laughs> area that we can get money yeah. for this, uh, so that we can say, okay, DEP, here's what we're looking at. If we do this instead of this, it saves us 3 million or 4 million or whatever. Um, if we have a project that's six million, we're able to get two million of funding here, one million here, five hundred thousand here, and another five hundred thousand there, taking it down to like a two million dollar project. That starts to be a little more feasible in yes. terms of if we have to Over finance loans. anything. Yeah. You know, that's possibly going to be attainable. Um, the other aspect, and this is Joe, what you and I originally started talking about, is um, for any of the grants and things like that, and other stuff we want to do, we need to have that income study. So we, we definitely want to get that started um, as soon as we possibly can, because I think that's going to be a, an input on a great many of these things. Um, not just from what we're looking at in terms of the, the grants, but also to be able to make that argument to DEP if we can't find the funding. Yeah. So I don't know to what degree anybody goes to the design system. Certainly, out of the maps that were in the library, so you can see some of the same similar maps in the back of this room. But is there any design documents that we could get our hands on? We, we can get uh, them from McCarthy, just so you know, I don't want to go out and. Well, we don't have anything. Yeah, there's two big boxes of stuff. <laughs> so we can also we can also see if McCarthy has any of that digitized. <laughs> probably, pro probably total more than six hundred pages. Um, but we can also see if McCarthy has them digital and send them around so that everybody has them. Um, I mean, we could go one step further and just put them up on the Google Drive and give you access to it. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, we can try. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, we'd have that, if, even if we can't get them from White Heigl, we should have them on file somewhere. So, um, no, 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 no. Uh, we'll, we'll try and get as much digital as we can. I like, I like to work that way because then you can throw it up on a big screen or, you know, print it out or whatever. But um, some of the older stuff, um, pre-2014, maybe hard copy only. And if that's the case, we'll make sure you have access to it. No more information about it for us. Oh, we shit. certainly don't want it. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I and think since there's newer updates, there's new things. Yeah, I think yeah. if I'm remembering correctly, because the way this unfolded is Light High design in the early 2000s. Um, and then when McCarthy Engineering took over in 2014, they didn't alter to the design. They just helped prep the plan to get it to the DEP for approval. So conceivably, that design for that sewer is probably close to 20 years old at this point. Um, and granted uh, gravity is gravity but i'm sure there's in terms of pumps and things like that there's there have been a lot of changes and advancements and even changes in the the best practice for these sorts of things that it's probably a functional sewer in the sense that it'll it'll convey waste from point a to point b but this is something that we had we had brought up before okay Okay, so late, late, early 2000s. So like 2008, something like that. So we're still looking at at least, let's call it a 12 year old plan just for the sake of argument. Um, also, Sue, is your mic still on? Like you're, yeah, here, wait. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Enjoy the technology. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't have enough outlets in the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, it's it's we're looking at it minimum minimum a decade because I've I, I'm surprised it's not longer than that. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were going to approve it in the board judge's state. Okay. Because, I mean, I've been on the board for about four years now, going on five. And I was involved for, like, maybe a year, year and a half before that on this. So, I mean, just just me is seven. So, it's 10, 12 seems short, but it's yeah. probably factual. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's... it. it it's in my personal opinion, it could, it could use some... It could use some love. There was there was a number. Twenty years ago, I was one of those places. Big Ben Drive School in a number of areas. I would say in the last ten years, I'm more willing to make that recommendation to my existing clients to put in those extra support. Developers are pushing the issue as much on the because of the cost and and the improvements in in the so drastic. Some of the low pressure systems where you know there's documented history of these things for 20, 25 years uh, out anything other than the existing things that you look at to make sure you know, the arms are still working structural damage or something. Now, I've got kind of a tangential question. Like with the holding tanks, I know holding tanks have to be inspected annually. If you have a like a lifter tank. Is that kind of the same rule as a holding tank? So if you have like a, a tank where you have the pump pumping out onto the, the lateral, um, does that have the same sort of regulatory rules as a full holding tank that you just get pumped out periodically? Oh, uh, so you have to have the arms in there. Okay. Either uh, side, if not, you know, maybe it's something like Yeah. Obviously, you know, the requirements to have it um, mm. uh, there. DEP has a uh, template that they use for you know, standard ordinance for maintenance of the pressure systems. And that essentially would ask that the township gain a maintenance contract. Homeowners have to do both of them year to pay for the maintenance. The other issue is spare pump, right? So if somebody's pump goes down, you know, they're out of sewer, how quick can they get it? A lot of the clients that I dealt with that have low pressure systems go back and say, I have 180 pumps in the township. You know, take a certain percentage and say, okay, we're going to buy a pump at the township building. If something goes down, we can get a pump out to a homeowner so that they're not 
yeah, is so that we don't well, want to be in the business of doing I was going to say that the question I have is, is the pump the homeowner's responsibility or is it the township's no, responsibility? It, it can be either way. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. uh, most of my clients prefer to put that responsibility back on the homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, I've had clients that take that responsibility. I've had clients that push the responsibility on the homeowner, but he still keep in the building yeah. yeah yeah i mean I'd, I'd rather i don't want to be like basically setting up a storefront but i'd, I'd rather have one or two that if somebody oh, yeah. had one it's like well i'm not going to be able to use my sewer system for a week until the new pump gets here it's right. like well you're obviously not going to give it right. back to me after you've started using it but right. here we'll sell it to you at that cost right and then away you go but the uh, connection is so standard that basically um the couple that are here would fit all the different systems, the plan just not out. So my recommendation would be that you go with a standardized pump. Only put in this pump, period. Because once you get a hybrid, uh, you might have one pump that's going to pump 60 psi, you might have another one that's only equal to 30. And so that 30 psi pump will not, never be able to get into uh, 60 psi line. You have centrifugal pumps, you have uh, Positive displacement pumps. These pumps that I'm talking about are a little bit more pricey. The ones that have the tried and true history, there is competition for that, but they are uh, semi positive displacement pumps. Yeah. Centrifugal pump really just kind of wings the water out and forces it out. A positive displacement pump is more like work something out with Alan as the SEO for like carrying the pumps and see if we could work something out that way. Um, the, the main reason that I, I sparked that bit of dialogue there was, like I said, with the holding tanks, they have to be inspected. Um, if we have that maintenance agreement in, is that a situation where we have to have, like, let's say we require your pump to be checked annually. Um, is that something that typically the SEO does, or is that something that we would be able to allow people to use a private firm to come out and check it, make sure that it was good, sign off on a couple of things? We definitely have a private firm come out. Okay. Um, question is, you know, how are you going to do it? Yeah. I, I think, and this is me just spitballing here, this is not a definitive decision-making statement, but if we had a, a standard form that we say, like, if you have this done and you need to have it done except annually or once every two years or something, that you have to fill this out or have the, the pumper or not pumper, the, uh, the maintenance person fill right. it out and turn it into the township. And right. then we just send it over to, to Alan and it just gets logged kind of in the same way that yep. the, uh, uh, holding tank inspections yep. do. So I agree. Yeah, that would be pretty simple. So I think that's, that's a, that's an easy hurdle to overcome. So thank you. Thank you for explaining a little more on that.
Oh yeah, no, believe me, we, we understand yeah. that. We're just, we're yeah. trying to get this down to, to a affordable level because a lot of the people, unfortunately this impacts only Main Street, mainly Main Street, Shady Cabin Circle, Canal, et cetera. Um, there are a lot of retirees on fixed incomes there. So the concern that we have is unless we get an overwhelming amount of financing, we're not going to be able to expect somebody to pay $250 a month for sewer right. when they're only taking in about ten or $12,000 a year total. So that brings up a good point here. As in the senior five There was no discussion on the actually there there was there was a little bit so I'm remembering the one section where it talks about the hookup fees where if you did the five thousand dollar hookup fee it was going to be like sixty five dollars a month and if you did the uh oh excuse me I have that backwards if you did the five thousand dollar hookup fee it was going to be around one hundred and twenty something like that and if you did the twelve thousand dollar hookup fee it was sixty five dollars a month right. and that was that was the extent of it that pays for the backup. yeah. Well, I think that was, that was all lumped together on that, that it's, it's not broken out. Cause that was one of the things, and I, it's, it's been a while since I dusted it off, but I, I did the breakdown of if you have this kind of project and you have this many households and you various grant levels at it, an Excel sheet where you could toggle stuff, but, um, where is the tipping point, the break even point for, if you have to pay. $60 a month to finance the project, another $25 a month to treat the sewerage and another, let's say $25 a month because you had to take out a loan to crush your old system and hook up. Um, what that actually translated to from a break-even standpoint for varying levels of replacing uh, on-lot systems with holding tanks and then like having to have them inspected once a year or pumped out every six to eight weeks. Um, it took a long time to hit that point, even on $5 million. So I expect it to be even Worse. Worse now with the 10. <laughs> um, but none of that was actually in the plan because that was one of the things that concerned me. And if I'm, I'm just going to, I'll say sidebar, even though I'm officially on the record. Um, there were a couple of areas that I wanted to change on the plan. The first one was I wanted a more comprehensive uh, cost benefit analysis, comparing a couple of different systems like we were just talking about now, uh, directly against financial feasibility in an area study of, of people. Um, and I also wanted to amend the plan so that uh, rather than right now, like you guys have read it, it's basically like we're doing public so we have no option. Um, I wanted to rewrite this and I unfortunately lost, uh, I was outvoted compared to the other two on the board uh, where we basically outlined the long-term plan. Look, we want to eventually do or do sewer when it makes sense. However, until we get to that point, here's what we're doing to manage under best technical guidance. And here's kind of a proposal if we have to do sewer, here are a couple of options and, and you know what makes sense financially. I, I unfortunately did not win on either one of those points, but um, I think both of those are necessary. And I think it, late is better than never in terms of being able to illustrate that, especially as we try to attack something as big as a $10 million project. You resubmitted now with this letter. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I'll, Obviously, I'll let you guys see the letter yeah. before I do anything with it, but I think it's important that we we try to set the dialogue of yes. like, look, we're not trying to weasel out from it. We're not trying to get out from under it, but we have we always have had concerns. But we have some very serious concerns now, yeah. and this is what we want to look at to try to address said concerns. Um, we're, we're actively working through it. We're engaging the right people to make sure that this is, is a viable prospect, but we need some help and cooperation from the DEP should we determine that like a, a change in design is needed to make this affordable. Yep. So I'll, I'll get that finished up and circulated before I send it to Andy. I'll send it to each of you. Yes. Um, and then I'll actually, I'll go one step further. I'll send it to, to you, Joe, and you can circulate it there. If there's anything that you would feel beneficial to add to that, um, input is always appreciated. So Financial evaluation, looking at grants, we talk about cost benefit analysis. Reassessing the plan. Yeah. Just trying to get yeah. you know, what mm -hmm. our scope would be for you all. Oh, 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 a big scope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's holding our hand the whole way yeah. till the end. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to trust that. I'm really passionate about sewer. I've been doing it for a long time. I love to see projects come. Have some folks that are actively 
choices that we're making online. I you know, I see a village here that has a lot of potential, you know, for generations to come to realize that it's not really possible to get there without some sort of treatment. Mm -hmm. and we can't just continue to put these water into a hole and go on the ground and expect to be able to drink water. Yeah. Yeah. Irregardless of what's happening now in the end. So, you know, I think what we would like to do is go back and draft a scope of work for you all. Uh, I would not include any dollar signs in there yet because I really want to understand and make sure our team mm -hmm. and your team uh, are one team on the scope so that you know, yep, we want to do that and that, that we don't really need to do that. And that was part of our uh, meeting, part of our reason to come up mm -hmm. here this morning. Uh, it's just to really understand where you want to go. Like I said, I saw some pitfalls in there. Gravity versus low pressure was one of them. Uh, public water was an issue, but I understand that situation now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a nuts and bolts kind of engineer. Finance I've done, I've done tapping key studies and such, but you know, I, I look to my, my partners to the left here to kind of help with the financing plan. Uh, Kimberly and I have written grants, so we have a good handle on you know what grants might be available. We know that Invest offers grants to the homeowners so that they can get that cesspool or septic tank uh, crushed in place. They can pay for some of the cost of that private side lateral uh, that would be. Um, an application that they would have to make individually with NVEST, but I can certainly tell you that no time in the last 30 years, Mike could maybe say 50, but no time in the last 30 years has there been more money available, with bad or otherwise, to the public for uh, these kind of infrastructure projects. So I feel like we could turn around and scope the work in a week, guys, I think. The draft scope of work, yeah, and get it up to you. But uh, you know, like my dad always used to say, you know, strike while the iron's hot, or mm -hmm. you know, make hay when the sun So these grants won't be around forever. And if that is the case, then we would be looking at you know, whatever that full burden is. Uh, I have a feeling that once this is passed by, yeah, things are going to be a little different. Yeah, no, I, for what it's worth, I, I agree. I think things, I'm pleasantly surprised there's as much grant opportunities as there is right now because it's it's going to go back, I think, to what it was late 90s into the 2000s and beyond where there's not going to be a lot available. And that was one of the things that has historically concerned us is like, yeah, you can ask for money, but that's no guarantee that you're going to get it. Yeah. So. Before we give up the floor, is there any questions I didn't get? So, just my own curiosity, uh, has there been any discussions of going the opposite direction to low free tuition in the board? Yes. I was going to say, I think that was yeah. in the plan. That was in the plan. And yeah. They, they, they don't want us. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want us. You know, you're wearing well yeah. 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 And that was, and that, and yeah. so back when there was one of the hurricanes came through and Wilma Surf was flooded and they got grant money to expand because we were coming in with them. Mm -hmm. So, so we all, you know, then they just, this, since then we've. This has been how it is. This, yeah, yeah. We just say we're going with Wilma Surf. But does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you're not in a position to hold an auction to go. <laughs> no. Nobody wants so us. Mill Creek said they don't want us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so the way I see it, one of the priorities, obviously, is for us to get a school in front of you all. Uh, I think that that discussion with the consumer party is really urgent at this point to yep. make sure that they are still, you know, connected with you all and that that capacity is available. I think it's really important to understand how much you do in charge of per gallon to treat our sewage and what comes along with that. They, we've done agreements with uh, PUCs and we've done bulk sewer agreements with neighbors 
And a lot of times there is an I and I component in there. So you can send us 100,000 gallons, you can send us 200,000, but if you send us over 200, that next 50,000 gallons is going to be built at this rate instead. That makes sense. Uh, because that pushes their offload on the past. And here's the other thing low pressure sewer systems, yeah. they no, have no iron, right? Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. nobody's going out and cutting their lateral off because there is no lateral or clean out off because there really isn't anything like that. It's a pressurized yeah, system. Those things that I think this joint's good enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's another oh, point, right? right? Mm -hmm. We'll be sending them no iron. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I certainly could discuss the issue with your solicitor about you know the sewer agreements, but, but I think that really is something that you all be more hammer out. Where are you with, with the sewer authority? Is it still as promising as it was? The other issue is probably when we get back to BEP, is that it can look like we're speaking with another firm. They are suggesting that low pressure is going to be a viable option. That probably would require you to do a special study, uh, which still has a public comment period, uh, or a revision to the 537 plan. So Act 537 is kind of really. Mm -hmm. um, 537 is that general act that mm -hmm. governs all sewer sort of planning, but then you get these little components of 537 planning that update the big picture marrying that 537 plan. So you already have now approved 537. It's likely, but I was going to talk to the DEP folks that you can come back in and just do a special study that will update the plan. It still requires public comment, mm -hmm. but the process is much less. Okay. Um, you know, then it kind of goes down from there. So we might have heard of the suit. Yeah, having all our ducks lined up in a row. Yeah. Up so, Doing it as bullet points so that everyone sees it and understands what we're yeah. discussing. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be uh, a big, I'm sure yeah. you guys know this, a big component is public uh, adoption or willingness to adopt. So I think if we did that, that would give us a chance to go through and explain. Uh, one, why we're not just throwing our, our fists up and, and getting into a knockdown, drag out brawl with the DEP. And we right. have the court cases that we can cite around like, look, right. because of the way this is, this is the way it is. Right. And then we'd be able to use the things that, that you're going to be providing in terms of like, okay, here's what we're trying to, to finance at the, the macro scale. Here are some of the things that are available as grants. Here are some of the things that are available at the micro scale for you as a homeowner to assist with connecting or crushing your old system. Um, because I think I'll, I'll, the biggest fear, aside from people maintaining that they don't they don't want it, they don't need it, is the financial aspect of it. It is is a terrifying thing to have thirty, forty, fifty thousand, sixty thousand uh, dollars staring back at you over the next twenty, thirty years. Uh, especially when, like I said, there's a lot of people that are, are low to fixed income mm -hmm. in the area. That that's a a absolutely uh, insane prospect for them. They just simply can't do it. So. I think that if we can find traction with the special study thing, the, the comments period and the ability to actually have a kind of a, an open public forum may be very beneficial on this. Now I'm going to join the conference call with DEP. I can get a better understanding of you all. I mean, I've not that I've worked with the South Central region, but uh, I've spent a lot of time in Norristown. Uh, when I was the authority in here, would go to Norristown. We had weekly meetings of the because they had this thing that's back for a long time. We want to see the borough representatives weekly to understand where they're going, what the next steps were, what the next steps were. None of this was done with the planning process, was it? Which which portion of it? Talking to people like this? I don't think so. What did you say? I didn't hear you. None, none of, none of like, this sort of discussion was done with the, with the, the planning, planning process. process. That's no, because it wasn't thing. needed at yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah. All they need, all, all that had to be done was get the plan approved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they just they designed a system. They did a, the the minimum requirement of the studies and they submitted it. That's what it was. But knowing the 
the bigger picture would have oh, been. Oh yeah, knowing knowing yeah. the whole landscape, I think is kind of uh, imperative to that. Yes, things have, I mean, financial things have changed. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, yeah. financial things have changed in the past three yeah. years even. Yeah. So, okay. Do you have any any further questions? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Better spot for yeah. grants, but then there's the inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Just one piece of high cost. Yeah. Last thing, and this is kind of a sidebar. We've developed an application called Paratracker, and what Paratracker does is it, it, it helps municipalities uh, with tracking moving records for uh, sewer management. SEO, uh, and uh, we are developing a software that can essentially uh, allow a company to come in, get onto our website, and post that pumping record so that um, Stu wouldn't need to go out and say, you know, John Doe down Canal Street hasn't pumped yet. We could generate an app very similar to what you have in the back there showing you those folks that have pumped, those folks that have not pumped. Um, well, our SEO I think, our I think SEO Alan has been doing that. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has software. he has something very similar sounding. I don't know if it lets yeah. the pumpers upload it on the website. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it's um, uh, Berks and Virotech. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and in our system, whenever he's done a pump out, we're able to keep track of it if the address location mm -hmm. if it's been done so there's kind of almost like a dual system so whenever i receive a notice from him i'm keeping track of the properties in our system too so when he works in tech yeah i can get you their phone number um his name is alan madera a-l-l-e-n m-a-d-e-i-r-a I don't know the phone number off the top of my head because it's in my phone. <laughs> but anyway, something that Alan uses for the SEO or the our terror tracker application could be, I don't know about Alan, but I know that terror tracker could be modified to help you all understand when a driver pumps been maintained as well. So it's really about any maintenance. So I want to say that in our plan, we're supposed to set up a sewer authority. I, I just remember uh, us. I, I remember somebody saying, when we're ready to put sewer in, we have to set up a sewer authority. We have to appoint a sewer authority. I, so I would have that. to look. I don't think that was, I think that was an optional thing. And I think that was precluded, uh, much like setting up our own treatment plant uh, up here because of the cost. Yeah. I don't think they can tell you. <laughs> yeah well i think what's what sue is saying is i think the plan says that we're we're going to do that but i'd have to look because yeah. i kind of remember seeing like this is something we could do but I, we're... I remember some discussion yeah, about that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know there was discussion about that even at the the more recent meetings yeah yeah i think he will not press that they have just Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, they don't view that as uh, necessarily pure. So, yeah. uh, but if we, if we go with normal stuff, do they become our authority? Oh, no, I'm just well, thinking. No, I don't know. Would be able to oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, then we definitely need to hire somebody because. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if well, Alan, if Alan. If Alan is doing all the like inspections and tracking and stuff like that, the only thing that we would have here in the township office is we would functionally be a pass through to Womelsdorf Sir Authority from a billing standpoint, the same way that we are for Kraft or from McCarthy, that people would pay the bills to us. We'd put it in, the, in a separate account and then we would cut a, one big check to, to Womelsdorf on a monthly basis. All of that stuff would be decentralized from us in the sense that you wouldn't be doing that as a, an office function. The only thing that Irene or the treasurer would be doing would be taking in checks and writing a check out. Um, everything else would be uh, either done by the WSA for the actual like operation and maintenance of the system um, on their their side of things, yeah. uh, or um, 
by Alan doing the, the localized inspections and if there was a need for permitting or anything like that. So I, I don't think we have to worry. No, but not worry about that. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's just get this yeah, started. Yeah there's, yeah, there's so many places. It's hard to know where to start pulling, but I, I think the scope of work uh, based on what we talked about with like looking at the design of the system, looking at yeah. the financial impact and yeah. feasibility, looking at the grants is, is the places where we need to start immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my opinion is, if there's grant money, let's go after yeah, it. Yeah, we already, we know. We have this started instead of just, we don't yeah. want DEP to come in here yeah. and say, you got to do this now. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you miss the grant window, you know, and the state comes in, it's just going to be a Yeah. Yeah. It's not pretty, and we want to avoid not pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Questions occur to me. You don't have trouble with work. And you had a rather sort how do you determine the bill? Uh, we'll be on an EDU case. So you would basically regardless of actually regardless well, of the number of people there. The the other the other thing is this isn't a, a pure gravity system. There's a pumping station in the plan at the end of Canal Road where Canal and 422 come together. So I mean, not an expert here, but I would assume Wolmelsdorf would probably be able to take that. Uh, pressurized leg from there to their treatment station and be able to get a, a volumetric from it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're going to want, they're going to want you to have some sort of injury to do Yeah. Uh, so they know they're sending this as many gallons as they are. Yeah. And so then you would divide that. A lot of smaller parties and townships, they, they charge based on an ADU. Mm -hmm. Right. So essentially, the one lot system is 400 gallons, but uh, that's because of that falls under chapter 71 of the code. Uh, public sewers fall under chapter 94 uh, of the code. And uh, they would generally look at the median population. And I would say your, your gallon per home is going to be around 200 to 250. So that's what you would, that's how you would uh, bill your customers. It would be per EDU because you won't have. We won't have water records to say, mm -hmm. you know, use this many mm -hmm. gallons. Mm -hmm. That's not great for the It's not good. The person lives alone. No, it isn't. And there are the people that are going to come out and complain, but I've seen it where they'll put a meter on their well, which is plagued with problems, uh, and go back and say, well, you give us your meter readings and then you get built. But that is it's so easy to get around. Uh, it's, but so, so for a small township like this, it would basically be per EDU, you know, maybe here's a 400 gallon a day, but we're only going to charge for this 200 quarter. So if you don't put meters on the grinder pumps. No, no, that's, you know, you would need to get that meter certified every once a year and we just turn to the normal pumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. Mm -hmm. all sewage meters. Yes. Yeah, so just, yeah, I, was, I was gonna say move, moving parts and something as caustic as sewage don't <laughs> don't, don't don't play well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. anything else not they try infrared beams, they try all kinds of things. I can tell you that a meter on a four speed is much more accurate than a gravity system. You could put a meter on a uh, low pressure binder system, but again, you need to get that certified. That would be another thing that the township would have to, you know, uh, manage. And mm -hmm. me, with 185 EDUs, that would be Yeah. Yeah. Should we look into putting in water around the cones? Water? See, what water is going to be a divisive sort of thing. I. Personally, I, I like having my well. Um, and I think if we had to do this, we'd fall into the same uh, unfortunate trap <clears throat> of the sewer, where if you put it in, there's a mandatory hookup to it. So it's not like you can opt into it. It's if it was done, that's you have basically just it. have to bulldoze your way through it. Everybody connects to it. Um, water is a lot less expensive than sewer. Um, Pressurized systems for sewer are a lot less expensive than gravity because you don't have to dig down quite as far and you don't have to worry about grade and everything. But um, 
I would say let's be very cautious about that because like I said, I know I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm sure there's a lot of people in town. It, it might be evenly divided. It might not. I don't know. But I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that go, no, I, I want to I want to keep my well. I don't want to be forced to hook up mm -hmm. um, and then have to deal with the, the issues that we have with um, like the chlorinated water or like I know Stonecroft has had concerns about aqua, certain things there that we, we open up a whole other can of worms, uh, can of worms there that we, we solve one problem and potentially create some more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, we'd be glad to help you with the water system, but I mean, quite honestly, I think what you, what's right in front of you right now would be- Enough. It's plenty, it's it's plenty big enough to, okay. to deal with this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. okay, well, Any thank you. Any questions for us? Oh gosh. I, yeah, I'm sure there's questions. Just, but just I, your yeah. contact information, that's what we need. So appreciate it. Be generous with your time. This oh. has, uh, Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been very eye-opening. Thank you. Oh, yeah. If you would, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Look, Sue, they have a unique entity ID. What? They have a unique entity ID. <laughs> You know what that is. Oh, yeah, I do. We all really appreciate it. Yeah. We look forward to working yes. with you on on getting this thank you. Thank to a point thank where it's it's actually going to work. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much for that. Thank you. We we appreciate it. <laughs> hey, American. Yeah, this this is this is much more. And by the way, Mike Wolf, I yeah. love your American Picker show. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> I like my show too. <laughs> 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 Thank you all. Oh my goodness. Thank, thank you, you so cool. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I think I'm done. <laughs> well, we've still got a full a full agenda to go through. I, to I was gonna say if, if we're okay with it, I'm gonna take a quick break. I wanna use the, the restroom real fast. Oh, yes. Educational so guys, yeah. let me stop this. Yeah. I didn't want to ask them if they could get us a ten million dollar grant. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the CWP LD uh, thirty seven Main Street self storage units. Uh, preliminary plans were submitted uh, for stormwater, uh, along with the stormwater plans, on May fourth, twenty twenty two. Their waiver request was granted at last month's Board of Supervisors meeting. Planning Commission has reviewed some of the revisions on the plan on July the nineteenth. Uh, however, a 90-day time extension has been requested uh, as the original submission expires on August 17th. Uh, the Planning Commission recommends that the Board of Supervisors grant the 90-day time extension, and the Planning Commission also recommends that the Board of Supervisors grant conditional approval of the preliminary plan based on McCarthy Engineering's review letter dated July 11th. Um, so I would say let's keep that as an item for Thursday night, and we'll actually sure. do all the motioning then. Uh, next item is the PSATS 401A plan. In order to maintain the qualified status of Marion Township uh, defined contribution plan, we must adopt certain amendments required by the IRS to ensure that our plan continues to comply with all the current laws. A motion is needed to adopt resolution 2022-5 to authorize the adoption of the plan restatement to comply with the IRS requirements. A uh, motion is also needed to sign the restated adoption agreement. PSATS needs these by July 29th, so let's make the, the requisite motions this morning. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt Resolution 2022-5 to authorize the adoption of the plan restatement. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to sign the restated adoption agreement. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Can you sign these before you leave? Absolutely. Pass them down my way. I'll sign them down. The Peter to do pile. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Agricultural Security Area Proposal. This is for 160 Sheridan Road. It's a 110 acre farm uh, owned by Henry and Jane Steiner. Uh, this was submitted to Mill Creek Township in Lebanon County. Uh, we received a letter from Mill Creek's attorney. Most of the farm is within Mill Creek, with less than a half being in Marion Township. 
uh, attorney Andy George will contact Mill Creek's attorney to clarify some points in the letter, and we'll hopefully have some follow up on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. um, next is the road projects for 2022, including culverts. Uh, box culverts were put on pen bid and ultimately awarded to Monarch Products at the last month's meeting. Uh, Reichert Road is going to cost $86,760. Marion Drive North is going to cost $89,598. Marion Drive South is going to cost $80,824. And Sheridan Road is going to cost $101,445. Uh, this results in a total for the culvert uh, pieces of 357,000. I have that wrong. It's 358. 358, thank you. Uh, $358,627.00. Um, we have the permits for Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover and the culvert on Marion Drive by Jake Weiss. Uh, we have received notice from the BCCD, the dirt and gravel low volume road grant program, that this project was not selected for this year's grant funding, unfortunately. Uh, they will retain the application if funding becomes available this year or will reevaluate the grants should we need it in 2023. Um, we have received notification from the Berks County sponsored grant program that they are unable to provide funding for our culvert projects as well. So uh, back to plan A, so to speak, of us doing it. Yep. Um, Butch, at some point, you, me, and Ryan need to connect for the first culvert, which, um, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the Reichert right. Road one? Yeah, right. um, Reichert Road, so that we have the right people there to be able to do the, the delivery and that we coordinate the the steps that we need to have coordinated before the stuff gets delivered in terms of blocking off things and digging things out and things. Um, well, I know Ryan is, but you need to call we need we need to be in contact with Ryan so that we're not squarely putting this on Ryan. So if Ryan needs help digging something out, that yeah. we go out and do it. Or if he needs, yeah. Or my, my point though, which is even beyond you, if there's uh, a situation where he says, like, okay, we're gonna do something and we need five people they don't have to be really strong they don't have to lift anything but we need five people to help uh spot something or flag traffic or whatever uh let us know because between us we can we can provide coverage um and make sure that we get this done so i just need you to keep a, a line open with ryan and then just loop me in occasionally so that i can make sure that we're, we're still sure. tracking yeah. right yeah, yeah. I oh, know uh, this is not a, not a statement of yeah. judgment, just a yeah. reminder of let's let's keep the the lines of dialogue open yeah. readily. I'd like to see sure. some more yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, there. other than having to take yeah. a day off of work, I'm I'm not opposed to yeah. crawling around and getting and we dirty still and have helping some out. Some of the safety vests in the room also. Mm -hmm. So if someone needs a safety vest, please have them wear it. You know, yeah, if, if that would out. be ideal because they're the mesh vest. I'd prefer if everyone was wearing safety vests at, the, at a minimum. Yeah, if you're out you working on stuff, you should have clothing. you should have yeah. a visible safety vest yeah. on it. The next item, can I do that? Oh yeah, absolutely, please um, take it away. All right, so the next item is moving funds from the road fund money market to road fund checking. I believe we have about $380,000 in the uh, road district fund right now. Uh, I believe we may be receiving an additional 52,000 in change from liquid fuels. So it'd roughly leave us with um, about 80,000 or so after all the projects plus that deposit. Is that something you want me to do right away or can this be done as needed? Um, this could be done as needed. We just want a motion to you authorize need, yeah. you to do it. To do it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't see the immediate need at this point. And certainly there's significant enough funds in, in uh, general funds that we could pay things out of general funds. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, there is sufficient funds well, in when's, the account. When's the first bill coming due for like the record road culvert? Because well, that contract wasn't even, we didn't even get the signed contract. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so I would, technically nothing's been ordered yet. Okay. Um, so I would say once we have that with a date that we have to pay it on, we move okay. the money for sure. the first one and then sure. we move it for the second one and move it for yeah. the third one. I mean, we really wouldn't have to move yeah. any, anything at this point. Yeah. There's sufficient funds in there. Yeah. Um, so so for right now, we're good. We're good to pay on everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'd want to pay I, it. I'm just saying, uh, once, uh, you know, if it was big, but the money Things are the way they are right now. Uh, we have to get this still order. Yeah. Hold yeah. The price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they have to hold the price. They won the bid. Yeah. They yeah. bid it okay. at that price. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They can't change the price. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's locked in. But my my point is, we don't want to pay this necessarily out of general fund. We right, want to pay right. this out of road right, fund and right. move and, things. And, and the money, the money's there. So yeah. I mean, it, it would leave us like probably without the liquid fuels funding, it leave us with a little less than thirty thousand dollars in the account, which is fine. But there are sufficient funds to pay for all of it at this point. Not anticipating any other um, issues coming out of that uh, fund. So. Okay. Well, yeah. and more than likely, some of these projects won't be done until next year. Now. Right, right. Because of the bog turtle thing, yeah. we only yeah. have a yeah. we have a window. window. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Depends one way or Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Well, the the timeline is, I believe, November first to March thirty first. Yeah. I think it's November first. Yeah, I think you're right. I think so. Um, did you hear anything back, like on the road work thing, not Colbert, but did you hear anything back from A1? I know there was talk about a yellow paint shortage. Yep, I, I called okay. and I, I think you called and I said, can you please give us a call when you're going to come out and do any of the painting? And he has not mm -hmm. called. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can call again this week, say, hey, any, any, and I'm assuming it's just too hot at this point. I don't know if there's I don't, a, I don't, I don't know it, that there not, is a too hot for paint other than them just not wanting to do it in the heat. Yeah. 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 He didn't call back. If you want to give him a call tomorrow, Monday, excuse me, and yeah. say, Hey, well, where are you? Yeah. Cause I think yeah. he mentioned that you I'm had called. Yeah. No, that, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Like we'll, between us, we'll be, yeah. we'll Just be consistent, sure. consistently right. annoying to yeah. him and make sure we get an answer. Just make sure he calls us and let us know when they're coming out. That That's the least information that I want. We understand the shortage. Just let us know when you're going to come out to do the white paint at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something is better than nothing. Yeah. And a phone call is better than no contact. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, do we, we're going to hold on a motion of moving funds for the time? We being. don't need okay. to. Yeah. Um, okay. The Main Street traffic study around the stop sign. Uh, did anything happen at the board meeting while I was not here? Um, Andy had said that he's going to review that again with Jim McCarthy mm -hmm. and see what they could do because they felt that there was a challenge to yeah. one of the locations. So he was going to get back to us on that. Okay. Uh, the next is the township engineer proposal. Um, Irene, you've contacted various firms. Yep. Uh, the only one we received from Crafts. Um, even at the last workshop, I think we had kind of landed on, let's just appoint Crafts. Um, well, I reached out to an additional four firms. We got uh, one, no thank you. And I haven't heard back from uh, three additional firms. It's been what, about two weeks, week and a half or so. And I think it's just the process until they get us. Yeah, a proposal. proposal. So. Yeah. You know, I guess, you know, I'm hoping that we have something definitive by September. Okay. And I think definitely if in September rolls around, if no one gets back to us, that's their level of interest and we'll go with who we need to go with. And that's that. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. And then this way the things can be turned over. Hopefully by the end of the year, it could be a smooth transition. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we got a letter on July 20th, uh, according to Eric Wilden. Um, or apparently, excuse me, not according, apparently Eric Wilden will contact us to discuss negotiating a renewal agreement. Uh, Andy has recommended hiring the firm Cohen and Associates from Pittsburgh to negotiate the new contract for the cable franchise. Uh, they're a boutique law firm that does communication work only. Uh, this is a, a area of law that is very unique and changes frequently and is very complex. Um, so I would say let's, let's get a, a line of communication open to Cohen and uh, and associated um, to see what is needed and really how much we're looking at in terms of costs because um, we don't get an in, insignificant amount from the cable franchise. So if there's a, a way to make sure that we, we get a little over three thousand yeah. dollars a year, I, is this just something about replying to Andy's email? And say yes. Can you please forward this issue to that group? Is that is basically? But that? the the yeah. thing that I want to know is like, are we going to be paying that firm? more than what we would be making in the franchising fee. Right. Like I don't want to spend $5,000 right. to make 3,000. Right. But if, if we look at it and like, yeah, it's going to cost a thousand bucks, but we can probably get it up to 4,000. So like we essentially be breaking even at that point or until we go into negotiations with Comcast, yeah. they, they may come in with a hard, hard sell and say like, look, we're only going to give it $2,000. But um, I want to get a little bit more detail on kind yeah. of what, what's going to click together on that, but uh, I'm not opposed to it. I just want to make sure that we're not spending or, or that our expenditure isn't going to exceed our income. Yeah. So you just want to let Andy know Thursday or you want me to email him? 
We just let them know Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> this, everything's so expensive and yeah, more. Yeah, everything. Yeah. And it's only getting more expensive. Yeah. Uh, next is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the Department of Community and Economic Development, uh, DCED, has unused ARPA funds uh, that approximately 75 municipalities either declined, missed deadlines for, or did not respond about. These unused funds will be allocated to municipalities that have accepted the first tranche of uh, ARPA funding. Uh, we will receive about $318.86. The second tranche of funding, um, $100,000. $848.79 uh, will be sent later this summer. Um, unless there's anything further on that, I'll move to the next item. So I, I have a question yep. whether we need to do a resolution again to for the small amount, the additional and, and, that, and Yeah, probably. It's small enough that we probably don't. So. Mm -hmm. well, wait, well, let's ask them about it on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's if we if we should do it and don't have to we probably should just do it anyway but it's yeah something. it's it's minimal yeah. yeah um next item is the office equipment i'm still poking around trying to find something that would be good use and uh inexpensive to um support and maintain so that we're not buying ink yes. constantly yes um that's still on the on the docket with the drawers with the drawers yes with yeah. the two drawers that's a yes. that's an important point yes. thank you very much for buying all that other stuff and that's excellent prices yeah i can't wait well i can't because i like being in the office with sue but it's going to free up that desk and give sue the room she needs and get the some uh what do you call it in there the filing files. space yeah, yeah it's going to be better for sue yeah sometime in the near future probably yeah. when it's not so hot uh, butch you and i can start moving stuff over and I'll, it's too hot in there. Yeah, yeah it's it's very hot <laughs> right now um but we yeah, I, I know that's why i said not anytime soon yeah not not anytime soon yeah. um but we, we can start moving stuff around yeah, and like a yeah. Like yeah i mean i have a hand truck at home yeah yeah so do um the, yeah. the hardest thing is going to be that desk because yeah. you really you have to get the desk on, like on up enough yeah. that you can lift it over Sue's yeah. desk because I don't necessarily want to take everything out of the office again. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can, yeah, yeah, we can jiggle it. Well, when that one went back in, your desk wasn't in there yet. We'll like, figure it out. When they, we'll when they did that. I know it was tight, but they got it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that we'll be able to get it out. We just have to get creative. Yeah. Let's worry about that then. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is the proposed dog leash curbing ordinance. This is currently being reviewed by Andy. Um, no update on that. Maybe we'll have some for Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Western Burke's Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is about keeping of pets, uh, proposing the change to allow for more chickens on properties less than one acre. Uh, Andy gave us Long Swamp Township Zoning Ordinance to review, compare. Uh, I know I had sent back some uh, suggested edits on things. Was there more discussion? The, the last Thursday board meeting? No. Okay. Um, okay. So if we have something we want to talk about that now, we can talk about that now. We can talk about it Thursday night. But I think it's it's pretty good. It's a good amendment. And like I said, there were only a couple of small changes that I suggested. Otherwise, I think it's a good fit for us in mm -hmm. terms of allowing more of a, an agricultural fit for our residents since we are a predominantly agricultural community. Next is the holding tank installation and maintenance agreement for 4113 Conrad Weiser Parkway. This is a commercial property owned by Harsham S. and Jesquant. Uh, I apologize if I butchered the name there. Uh, Kay Dr. Mangat. Man Mangat and yeah. his wife. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Mangat and his wife. Uh, they're proposing a subdivision of this property. However, the soils for the proposed lot were found to be unsuitable for on-lot sewage disposal. Our SEO checked with the DEP about putting a holding tank on for the proposed lot. This is acceptable, but must be a non-residential use. And sewage flow must not exceed 800 gallons per day. So apparently um, getting a septic system approved is the first step when you want to subdivide something. Yeah. Um, so that's why this was done. And there was some kind of, the ground was, I forget what he told me. Not acceptable for yeah, a normal septic system. Yeah, it doesn't system. perk correctly. So. Okay. Okay, so we'll keep an eye out on... It didn't perk or something. Yeah, as I say, it probably failed the perk test. We'll keep an eye out for their 
future submission yeah. for subdivision. But yeah. for, for right now, nothing needs to be done. Uh, holding tank installation maintenance agreement for 3725 Conrad Weiser Parkway. This is a residential property owned by Courtney Morris. Her home is served by one on-lot septic system that appears to be functioning normally. She wishes to open a licensed one operator beauty salon in her home. DEP regulations establish a sewage flow of 200 gallons per day for this use. She proposes installing a holding tank for the beauty shop to keep the wastewater from her hair dye and chemicals separate from her existing septic system. Otherwise, she would need to enlarge her existing system. Uh, total sewage flows for the property will be about 400 gallons per day for the home and 200 for the, the business uh, or 600 total. This is less than the 800 gallons per day uh, of a minimum for the commercial property. So there's really no issues there. Uh, next item is the holding tank installation and maintenance agreement for 38 Main Street. This is Reed's Church. Uh, this is now a commercial property owned by Wilmer Good. He has built an addition to the back of the church for his business, Good Sound uh, Company Pro Audio Sales and Installation. There may be other uses for the structure in the future. Uh, the church has a kitchen and restrooms that are served by a pre-regulatory septic system. He would like to install holding tanks to serve the restrooms in the new addition. He, his proposed sewage flow will be 799 gallons per day, according to the SEO. The old septic system is grandfathered. The new business will have uh, only three to four employees at 10 gallons per day per employee. Uh, anyone using the new restrooms instead of the old will be lessening the load on the old system. So we got nothing that we have to really do or approve there. Right. And he's part of that strip of the, the sewer, sewer goes, goes in, in. That, that would be replaced yeah. in service by the, the, uh, the non-on lot, the municipal system. That concludes the items on the agenda. Um, in terms of comments, I do not have any additional comments today. Irene? Uh, uh, there's always something to talk about. I know we had briefly just tossed around the idea of uh, looking at what roads would need to be repaired. And since these gentlemen um, uh, talked about grants and all that kind of availability, there is a, a person that I vaguely know of that can do grant writing as well for other purposes. So if between you and Butch, you get me the roads, I, I say up to 15 miles. And I guess we have to talk to Charlie Parrish at PennDOT this way. I hate to say, if we just keep on getting more and more products on the table, mm. get funding, I mean, why not? Let's just, just go and do this. So yeah, the one thing that we need to be yeah. cognizant of yeah. is uh, in terms of multiple asking for grants. multiple grants and yeah. things like that, uh, in addition is um, our ability to fund. There's almost right. always an in-kind contribution right. component. So right. we, we, we need to be careful. And this is what right. I brought up with the ARP, where we don't want to ask for 10 miles worth of full depth of reclamation, right. where it requires a 50% match. So right. we don't have right. $5 million or whatever yep. it is to, to toss into the, yeah. the grant mix. So we need to be so. careful yeah, we don't over leverage. Yeah, um, it's just, with, it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's just so frustrating. And, and, and then it, it goes back to considering a new building, getting that, um, that grants, the income study. Mm -hmm. If we meet those requirements, we could get 70% funded. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that just blows my mind, but. Yeah, the way we looked at yeah. it is if we, if we spent a million dollars on a new building, like spent a million dollars, if you get 75% grants, you're looking at 250,000 right. that we already have two right. more than 200,000, right. just an ARP money doable. sitting there. Right. And we right. have budgeted like $60,000 or $54,000 or something like a that year. a year for maintenance yeah. on this place. We effectively yeah. in one year right. could pay for the entire building lock, stock and barrel, right. not right. considering if we were to sell this building for any sort of uh, amount whatsoever. Right. But it's also trying to like the more I keep on thinking about the more, the more things just pop up to it. Safety is the number one thing having access to the building so that in the event there is another pandemic, that it's a very limited access where they could still come in, interact with Sue and leave the building and not, not go into her personal space or, or essentially breathing space, having that kind of system in place security issues security mm -hmm. security security i mean well i mean I hate the, to say you can't ignore what's happening in the news from yeah. from the ground yeah. up like if you yeah. ignore the obvious like the things that you just said the real big right. elephants in the room um like the electrical system in this building it's is awful. not great and yeah. there's like very very few outlets yeah um it's not wired for any sort of communication right whatsoever um that's something that we have to retrofit in um our meeting spaces are are not as 
usable as they should be. Like it would be right. better in a if we had a new building, right. having both of these rooms ability have right. the ability to be joined together right. or split apart. Right. The, the like, focus would be to have it more of as a community. Yeah, center, exactly, right. exactly. So right. I mean, there's there's a, a laundry right. list of things that exactly that would be better served with the new building. Yeah. And I'm but, getting kind of overwhelmed by how many options there are, but at the same time, thinking about green technologies, thinking about um, as we're being hit by this heat wave how many of our residents are affected by no air conditioning poor conditions could we serve as um, a cooling center a cooling center things like that because i don't think there's anything else around here that's like that the same in the alternative and not the also in, in the, the the opposite cases people lose their heat in the winter etc etc but having the technologies and having the the basic infrastructure set up so that we could do that um, we've seen our building poorly serve as a command post for an emergency management perspective. And so there's so many future needs, there's along with current needs that I just need, I need help, I guess, with this input. If you guys are okay, I'm going to try to reach out to some local colleges Please. and see what kind of uh, technologies or input they could give for us in helping actually design a building that meets some of our, our, our needs. And after that, then go forward and say, okay, now we have this information. But unfortunately, I think Act 537 is going to really take precedence. Yeah, that's, that's going to take, the, yeah. I'm not saying we can't do yeah. those things in tandem. Yeah. But that's going to take a lot of the, the yeah. focus, a lot of the attention. But I have a feeling that that stuff is going to take years. It's oh, yeah. Not, it's not it's going to be an overnight, overnight thing. No. Yeah. Something like this. I mean, it, uh, I've been exploring that this concept of environmental hubs. And, and there's all kinds of interesting things that are out there that I'm finding on the internet, but I honestly want to talk to some of the universities and see which students may be interested in helping me out with that. And as long as you guys are okay, um, I will reach out to the grant writer. Once we have more concrete information, say, okay, this is a design plan. This potentially could be the area where we could build. Um, you know, what what can we do with this, this kind of a design, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes people might want to throw money at us just for particular innovation for a project too. So if we're not so um, uh, hard and fast to stick to traditional kind of uh, construction, et cetera, mm -hmm. if we're willing to take a gamble on something innovative, then I think that would be kind of cool too. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah. with all other things that we've talked about, you kind of have to go where the money is yeah. if you're going to do yeah. that sort of project. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I just might reach out to some of the local universities and see, hey, this is some of the concepts that we have. These are what our needs are and, and how can we work so that we have an environmentally sound building, some that's going to last for the future, some that's going to really serve the community. Can you help me out with design? Can you help me out with, with pointing to resources? Because again, they may have access to things like just having these gentlemen and ladies here today. There's so many things I didn't even know existed. And, and you can't ask the question if you don't know what to ask. You don't, you don't know what you don't know. Right, right. And, and I feel like, like I'm in that position. I know about traditional building, but I don't know about building a, 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 a commercial space at all. So, yeah. So that's my frustration. And Butch, you got some estimates on uh, the boom arm or something? Oh, the mower, the mower yeah. arm. Yeah. Mower arm. Definite uh, estimates, but uh, but Stevenson, the salesman that we deal with at Stevenson, mm -hmm. he told me the other day until December he'll have a definite uh, quote for used equipment that would have uh, have uh, they'd be like maybe four year old pieces of equipment which would have. No more than 1,200 hours on, and, and 1,200 hours on an engine is peanuts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're, those engines aren't even broke in yet, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that versus buying new. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. New, because uh, uh, I did get a price on, on a new outfit, and that's on left field. That's, mm -hmm. That's one hundred eighty thousand. No, yes. yeah, so we can't. Do that. No, we can't no, afford that. No, no, no. I, I told the seller right there. That's all yeah. our ballpark. Yeah. And that that would really cut down on your time with doing a lot of things. Is that correct? What's that? Like it would cut down on a lot of of the time that oh, you need. Yeah. Well, like like down at the Edge Bridge, I yeah. could have I could have done that myself. Yeah. 
uh, in two hours instead of yeah, eight, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know how the state works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I I thanked them a couple times and and I I don't think we're getting a bill, are we? No, we should because uh, no, it depends they on. They said they were being good neighbors. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I I guess so I should write them a letter. Yeah, we should yeah. probably send them a thank you letter. Uh, yeah. I I thanked them a couple times. I said, <laughs> yeah. I I really appreciate this. And uh, well, and I got a couple of residents that had called me up and said, um, I almost got hit. I almost got hit like three people in one day contacted me and I'm like, okay, you know, and that's when I called again, because I called earlier, like the week prior. And I said, listen, I, I have too many people calling me up. They almost get into an accident because of the visibility issue. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had somebody call in complaining yeah. and, and I, I asked, I said, would you mind calling them? Because maybe yeah. the more people call them. Yeah. And the next day I got a call and said, yeah. I'm going to mow that for you. That was after I had called again. Uh, well, in fact, uh, Stevenson, yeah. uh, 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 those, uh, those used to put, uh, use the equipment between uh, around the $70,000. All right. Just, uh, still yeah. quite a bit, but yeah, yeah, it's less. Still yeah. quite a bit, but, uh, but uh, you know, when you come up uh, the whole road here from yep. the local store, yep. those trees are hanging yep. on the road for your car again. Yeah. And I can, uh, I can be able to, uh, they said I can, those, those booms reach up 16 feet. Okay. So that'd be good. So, uh, and how big of a tree limb can you cut? Well, depends. Uh, depends uh, which more you get on it. If we have the 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 like the more we have now, that's the you know with the, yeah. with the Is with the flail, flail with flail with the, blades. No, no, with the blades on. No. You can you can if people have to be paying attention, uh, but I'm wondering if putting uh, like intersection limb, function yeah. intersection like yeah. that yeah. might be worthwhile uh, too. That's limited because like they've obviously got a stop sign. They're going to be <laughs> so, attentive so to that. Many people the, coming down this curve may not. Kind yeah. of blades especially if there's left. tree cover left, which is, and then, which is and the problem so the big, the big one would be if we uh, and, uh, and most of uh, most yeah, of that caution sign equipment is uh, yeah. up this direction yeah. and, uh, like as you're coming around the, the hill and, there uh, caution yeah. intersection they, ahead. Uh, stevenson maintains changing oil and everything the state don't do any of that yeah so yeah so Hey, so he'll, he, he said he'll leave me no November or something. Okay. Okay. Try. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Butch. And, uh, and I know, I know where there's a unit that we could get now, but, uh, it's a unit that would be on the, on the three point hookup on the back of the tractor. I don't, we don't want nothing like that. No. You're going to have to. Sit like this the whole time watching the food. No, yeah. <laughs> we want something that's safe and convenient. Uh, I mean, uh, and yeah. that, that be, and that tractor would have a loader on, and we we get a a sweeper to put on the front of the loader. Uh, and uh, and uh, we could get that for in the seventy thousand dollar range, doing it. That, that that unit would be, yeah, that, that unit would be like four years old and would only have uh, like four or five hundred or so. Wow. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> I don't think, uh, you're always looking back mm -hmm. to, work, yeah. to work at your. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, that's not safe. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Right. And and uh, the, these units from Stevenson, these would be John Deere tractors, where that unit would be a new home, which I don't have no problem with either or, <laughs> but uh, but it, the new home would be would be looking back the whole yeah, time. Yeah, no, no, that would be yeah, good. And, yeah, and uh, that unit's between uh, Lancaster and. And the Philadelphia area in the township. In an hour and a half from here, basically, they said. So I give us some more numbers. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, unless uh, Stevenson uh, find, uh, 
comes up with a, a unit that would be for sale today. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Because I said, uh, keep, keep my name on the on the books. Once I don't know what yeah. they're going to do. With that. Sorry, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So in, in the course of saying about the S bridge and stuff, and I don't think yeah. we technically need an ordinance to place this because it's a non-enforceable sign. Yeah. Um, do we maybe want to put like up Main Street a bit towards like a, coming from Womelsdorf, a yep. caution intersection ahead sign? Yeah. Because there isn't anything like that there now yes. presently. And if you have a lot of overgrowth, you may not even know that there's a road there until you've already yep. come around the Especially turn. Especially if you're unfamiliar with the road. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's something we can do instantly and very inexpensively. Yes. Like, yes. I don't think we have one of those signs, but we can't be looking at more than maybe what, what uh, an intersection, in, intersection ahead. ahead, like one of those, like the intersection signs. But we're not talking a huge amount of money, even if we had to buy one from MSI, we're talking 60, 70 bucks at the most. Yes, I'd yeah. like to do that. So, uh, so if you could put that on the agenda for Thursday night, that way we don't have to amend the agenda for today. Um, we'll, we'll authorize that order and I'll yeah. get one of those and then we can have Butch put that in. But it, it, if it helps even a little bit, it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. And so. people tend to speed a lot in that particular section of mm -hmm. road. That was the one complaint I got. Yeah. 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 So, so I think that would help quite a bit. So I just have two more quick things. Sure, um, sure. One other thing I asked John to, I know he talked about last year about putting together these pump kits for homeowners because we're coming into hurricane season and heavy rains. So I said, John, go price out a pump kit. You have a budget when it comes to being the EMC. Um, then, you know, price out a pump kit. I know we had talked about making something like that available to the residents. Because if it was something that was within his budget and we could easily put together these kits, we'd have to have residents sign out, return it. They'd be responsible mm. for any damage to any of the components and replacements. So, um, and then on that, that part of his budget, I know the prior meeting we had talked about considering a donation to um, Tulpahawken Township. And again, um, working with the grant writer, seeing what money we can um, help them get equipment and stuff that they need. Again, if there's no problems with you guys, I'll reach out a little bit more to Pulpy PD and talk to them and say, hey, what is it that you need help with? Work with them with a the grant writer and and uh, see what help we can provide for them to just get to, just about almost more so like help facilitate the conversation, get them in touch with the right people. Yeah. So again, it, at next meeting, if you guys are okay, Again, placing it on the agenda if we want to make a donation to the Tulpahawk and PD. Because no one could have anticipated the uh, increased cost of gas. Yes. And yeah. they, I didn't realize on the police report, they, they, they show us the amount of mileage mm -hmm. that they put. And that would be a considerable, that, that wouldn't even pay for one, one month's worth of yeah. fuel, which is just crazy anymore. So, Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think I said this the last time we talked about it. I'm not opposed to giving them. Uh, yeah, a helpful and, donation on that because they've been right. they've been very good to us over the years. Coming out of the EMC's fund. Yeah. At this point, so. Yep. So let's get it on the agenda for Thursday night. So thank you guys. Okay, uh, Jim. Anything for you? Okay, Sue. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, in that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now ten fifty nine. Second. Uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>